Uh, it was a good team win. Uh, when you run the ball like that, you've always got a chance. I think we ran for over 400 yards on, I don't know, a lot of carries. And uh, that wasn't necessarily the plan coming in. We're trying to be balanced. And uh, yeah, when you're, when you're having that kind of success running the ball, it makes it easier on everybody. Certainly your defense can stay off the field, stay fresh. And uh, so, you know, that was, that was fun to see. Um, I thought when we threw the ball, we threw it pretty effectively. We just didn't need to throw it much. So it was a good win. And uh, we have to cut out the silly penalties, um, things that we control. Those things will come back and, and kill you in, in close games. And so we have to push, be able to push that past that. And just it's just a, you know, it's a competitive maturity, a championship level maturity that we have to attain, that we have to push for. Um, we've got a huge, 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 um, challenge this week. Buffalo comes in here at three and one. They beat NIU today. Uh, NIU beat Notre Dame a couple weeks ago. So uh, you know we have to have a great week of practice. We'll enjoy this for 24 hours, and then we'll we'll get on with it. Wow. I, yeah, I didn't know that they were both over 150. I was told that it was a record, which is you know it's impressive, but. Um, you know, both of them, they're different types of runners. You know, Mel's more stop and start and lateral quickness. Um, and then um, Durrell, he's just, you know, he's got great energy. Uh, he breaks tackles. He runs hard. He runs with his knees up. Um, he secures the ball well. So bringing those two guys in and add him to the group, you know, Victor, who didn't play tonight. Hopefully he'll be back next week. And then Cam, who's just, you know, he's a little beat up. And he's our, you know, he's our lead guy, um, being able to, you know, kind of give him a little bit of, of a rest when those two guys are playing well is great. But, you know, having four running backs plus a quarterback that can run, you know, that that's that's what you're after. Just talk about Nick's overall performance. I mean, he seemed like he had everything under control. He did. You got to make sure we secure the football. Can't turn the football over. I mean, those things, you know, you, you can't be – lulled into thinking that everything went right just because the scoreboard was what it was. You know, you have to be very, very critical about the things that we didn't do well. So we have to take care of the ball better. Those things, you get in a tight game, those things will they'll hurt you, just like the penalties I mentioned. So uh, we'll stress that with him. Um, I think it's really important that we continue to stress him, taking care of him, himself, getting down. I, I'm not so sure that I'm fired up about our quarterback dropping his shoulder to try to get in the end zone. You know, I think... Uh, you know, if he was 230 pounds, that might be different. But uh, he, you know, he got caught up in the emotion and he wanted to score and he did it and we got out of that one. So I would just tell him next time, make sure it's your left shoulder and not your right shoulder. And uh, but I mean, I'm serious about that. You know, he's got to learn when to get down and get out of bounds. And um, we have to be really careful, you know, how much we put on him in terms of running the football. But it is certainly something that makes it really tough to defend this type of offense. Yeah, you know, I heard on, on the offensive line, I wasn't saying that they were able to put up this kind of performance, you know, given that there were some guys that came up. Yeah, well, Ben didn't play, Murawski. Um, so Brady Weyburn stepped in, as did Kyle Juergens, and they kind of split time, and they did well. You know, and I mean, I think there was probably concern about the interior of our offensive line, given the fact that we lost three really good players from last year. But, um, you know, having guys that can step up and step in like Brady did and Kyle, it just shows you that we've, we're, we're building depth, and we, we need to keep building depth. Um, when you can replace a really good player like Ben and still have the productivity like we did today, that shows that you're, you're building depth. Durrell looked like he, he has patience. He was waiting and waiting for a hole to open, and then he goes, square shoulders up. Yeah. Well, to, to be effective running um, outside zone, which is what we run, you, you have to have patience, and it's a it's a it's a run scheme that demands patience. And then one, you put your foot in the ground, you get vertical. And uh, those the the best outside zone teams are the teams that have backs that can do that. They can be patient behind the line of scrimmage. They understand where the hole is going to open up, and when it does, they put their foot in the ground and they get vertical. And that's what you know. That's what he does. That's what Cam does. That's what. Uh, um, Victor does, you know, uh, Mel is a little more that, you know, which is great because it's a, it's a really good change up for us. I haven't talked to him. Um, I'm sure that it probably feels good. 
but I don't think he's the kind of guy that's going to uh, bask in the glory of you know one win. I mean, you know, he's he's pretty focused. He's pretty hard on himself. Um, I think he feels like there's a lot for him to prove. I think he's got a little chip on his shoulder. Uh, I know for a fact that you know he wants to improve in the passing game. Um, I mean, every day he stays after practice. He works with receivers. He comes in and he meets with Brad and Gordy. Um, he's kind of relentless right now in terms of his pursuit of being a really good football player. So, of course, it feels good. But I think that you know, within that, there's this man, there's this real thirst to to become the player that people thought that he was going to be coming out of high school. Jim, your defense, 250 total yards, it looked like to me that was the best effort. Yeah, it was. I mean, you know, when you give up a run at the end and you're a defensive-minded coach, that always just puts a little stain on it. But if you look at it as entire in its entirety, we did a good job. We 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 kept track of a quarterback that's a really good runner. He was their leading rusher coming into the game. Uh, they didn't have a lot of success in the past game. Uh, we tackled better, but you also see when we don't tackle well, what what happens? You know, that bat got out and he scored and. We've got to eliminate those things for us to, you know, be the type of defense that I think we're capable of being. I'm just curious about the last touchdown pass from Joe. Was that what you drew up? Did you want to throw a touchdown? <laughs> I want every pass to be. I want every play to be a touchdown. Uh, no, we were. It was. Uh, they played man, and you know, when he throws, when when they play man, that play calls for him to throw the slot fade, which he did to. Uh, to Porter, Shamar's made two really nice catches now in you know four of our games for touchdowns. That was a one-hander. I mean, he's a talented player, and uh, you know he's gonna he's earning the right to play more in this offense. But uh, you know, by no means at that point are we trying to like rub anything in. I mean, that's not our intent. But you got to keep playing football. You know, that was the only throw that that we that we made when we got a big lead, and it was third down and. They played man, and we weren't going to be able to run it. And so we got into a throw, and, and Joe converted to Shamar. It was great. What is the confidence level? It's good, but you know your confidence is based on the work that you do. And the only way you, you maintain confidence is you continue to work hard every day. And you, you like I said, you can celebrate this one for 24 hours, and then it's it's over, it's, it's gone. And then you start working again, right? And you build on the things that you did tonight and you get better. And then that's when you become a confident football team, when you've done the work. You know, there's really no mystery to that. You just, otherwise it's just, it's, it could be false confidence, but real confidence comes in the work that you do every single day on the practice field, in the meeting room, in the weight room. Um, you know, when you're at home studying on your own, the extra time spent, you know, amongst your teammates studying stuff, that's where you gain your confidence. Got him too. You know, really proud of him. Um, it'd be easy for him to go in the tank, you know. Um, I think the thing that kind of has gone unnoticed, maybe, maybe it's not gone unnoticed, but I notice it is his, his kickoff ability. I mean, it's a huge asset when you have a guy that can kick it deep left or dig deep right and put it out of the end zone or into the end zone. You know, I don't think anyone realizes how hard it is to kick it deep right, which he, you know, I think that did they, re, they return one kick, you know, one kick. So that's really beneficial to our defense, but just being able to get him a couple field goals, you know, I was kind of hoping we could get him another one, but. You know, Joe went and threw a dang touchdown pass, so <laughs> we'll take it. Do you feel like you made a, a statement today just in terms of the performance of the team on both sides of the ball and kind of how you feel like your identity as a team should be? Uh, I don't believe in statements. Uh, I think the second you start thinking you made a statement, then someone jumps up and bites you. I mean, it's an ongoing process. You have to make a statement every week, you know what I mean? And this one's, yeah, we made a statement for today, but it doesn't matter going forward unless we back it up. So. Um, I mean, that's how that's how I look at things. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of them. I'm ha we're happy. We're excited. We're not satisfied. Uh, we're not going to go. Hey, we're the greatest team going. It, it, uh, that's not going to be our attitude. We're going to keep putting the work in. Good. Feels good always to get a win. You know, just really proud of the way. Uh, <laughs> just pr proud of the uh, way we played uh, as a team. You know, be being able to uh, you know finish. All four quarters. I know that's something that Coach Moore really made an emphasis on in practice, and you know we we push each other 
to our limits each and every single day, and I think that contributed. It was a big contributor to why we won this, this what, weekend. What do you think about walking off the field uh, as a winning quarterback in college? Mm -hmm. It's been kind of a long road for you. Like yeah. Stops. Um, yeah. What, what was that in your mind? Yeah, you know, first of all, I'm, you know, grateful to God. I'll go to him. Um, through, without him, none of this is possible. Um, just trying to stay true to myself and um, stay true with, to what I'm passionate about. And I was fortunate to really get an opportunity over here with Coach Moore and his staff. And, you know, I feel like we have blossomed as a team. Um, and uh, and I, I just couldn't be more thankful for the, the opportunity and the belief that everybody uh, in this facility had for me. Um, so I'm really excited. Coach just said that you just needed some experience to mm -hmm. show people who you really are. Do you mm -hmm. think you started showing pieces of that today? And, yeah. and how much more of you is there to see? Yeah, you know, it's always a continuous work in progress. You know, I'm never satisfied with the way I play. Um, you know, I'm, I'm satisfied with the team, don't get me wrong. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm never satisfied. I always feel like there's room for me to improve each and every single week. And, um, you know, um, it, it, it's good finally getting my feet on, onto the field. You know, it's obviously been a little bit of a journey for me, but, you know, it's better late than never. So. Do you have any idea how long, it, you know, you played for so long, so good for that. Then all of a sudden mm -hmm. you just stopped playing. You know, how, how long does it take to kind of get back, everything back? Do you have any idea? Yeah, you know, I, I don't really, I don't really have an accurate uh, answer to that question, but you know, it's it's definitely um, there's definitely a little bit of a learning curve. You know, there's there's uh, some things that you know won't won't um, what's the right word? Um, I'm blank on the word, but it's it's not it's not the fact it's 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 not going to happen like that. You know, it's a continuous work in progress, like I mentioned before, and you know, just really just trying to get as much chemistry in with with everybody on the field, um, all my guys in the locker room, and. Um, and just have them help you contribute to a success on the field. You feel like you're developing your touch. It looked in your opener like you were just firing the ball so hard, but now it looks like there's a little more touch to your passes. Yeah, you know, um, like, like I mentioned earlier, you know, just um, always trying to find ways to get better. And that was one thing that I wanted to, to work on, you know, just making it easy as possible for my receivers and everybody to catch the ball, get, my, get the balls in the uh, playmaker's hands. Um, so that's something that I made an emphasis on. And, you know, as, as the season goes on, just continuously trying to find ways to get better and be a better leader um, to put my team in the best situation to win. How far do you feel like this team has come since week one? I feel like we have overcome a lot. You know, as a team, you know, we had an identity check, you know, first week, you know, just really trying to figure out who we wanted to be. And, um, you know, credit to Coach Moore and the rest of the staff just pushing us each and every single week. But also us as players really taking that step forward to, you know, be leaders out there on the field and really just take control of the team. You know, I think the the most successful teams are player-led teams. So, and I think we've done that. Like what gave you the confidence or the belief that this was going to be, that this could be the place for you? Yeah, you know, this this place, you know, was was very unique for me because I had, you know, I had an opportunity to be a part of something transformational. And you know, we got a lot of work that we had to do each and every single week, um, but. We're surrounded by a great group of guys, great coaching staff, and that's something that really just just really made me want to come out here and try to do my best to leave my mark within the team. Yeah, Coach, your said, does your confidence waver when you when you're you know going from in school to school and trying to find a place? And and what was the I guess the lowest of the low, and, and what's been the best highs of the high so far? Yeah, I mean, through I feel like throughout everybody's journey, there's always a bunch of ups and downs that everybody goes through. Um, you know, my biggest thing um, that I try to do is. You know, just stay true to what what is important to me. Um, just stay true to what I know is true, um, and um, you know, just keep my keep my morals in check. You know, just never let that be, or never let external factors hurt the confidence that um, that I have going on. Coach said he's not sure he wants you leading with your shoulder, but you are someone who who makes his mark with his legs yeah. as well as his arm. How fine of a line is that for you to walk? Yeah, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do it to put the best position and or put the team in the best position to win. Um, wh whether that means me sacrificing myself for a touchdown or me throwing a touchdown or me handing the ball off, I'll do whatever I need to do to get this team to get in a uh, one and zero column each and every week. How great does it feel to have a running game like you had today? Yeah, it feels great. You know, it's always a blessing to you know have a God-given talent, um, but you know. We got a lot of great athletes all, all over the field, so I'm really, really looking forward to getting getting into uh, this next week, throwing the ball down the field and handing the ball out to really, some ta really talented backs. What, what is it that Mel and Darrell do really well that allows them to be so effective? Mm -hmm. and, and you know, how do you like contributing to the run game from the QB position? Yeah, you know, um, 
Rail and Mel, that they're they're hard workers, and I think that's um, that was one of the main factors to the success this season um, tonight. Um, you know, just how hard they worked on and off the field. Um, they got that mindset that dog and all of our backs do really. Um, they all work hard. They all push each other, and you know, expect greatness out of each other every single day. And I think we see the the, the, the dividends at the end uh, on Saturdays. What is there still to your game that people haven't seen yet? I guess they're gonna have to come find out. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, you didn't plan on running the ball as much as you guys did today, but, but your rushing load was up high in the yeah. first half. Was that part of your game plan coming in? You know, my part of the game plan, um, you know, I told the coaches that we'll do anything and everything we need to do to win. Um, you know, if, if, if one thing's working really well and the other thing isn't, you know, we're going to do that one thing. And, um, you know, the coaching staff and the, and the players accepted that really well tonight. And, you know, I couldn't be more proud of the way that we played as a team. Would you rather run it or pass it? I'd rather do both, you know. I'd rather do both. So, you guys are gonna yeah, yeah, that also happens. But if it ain't a hole to run through, I can't do nothing. So, hey, how, how does it feel? You pretty much doubled your carries, and doubled your yardage in, in one game. I think you know for the first three games of the year, what you had tonight was, was like 157 or something like that. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, it felt amazing. It feels like I'm getting back in the groove of things, how things was in high school, and I'm starting to get that feeling again. It's a great feeling to have. The confidence is definitely back. I definitely know what I'm capable of. The coaches see what I'm capable of, and the team know what I could bring to the team now. So I'm just so grateful for that, that I could prove to them that I want it just as much as y'all do, and I'm here to win football games just like y'all. So let's get it done. I feel like it's a big problem for the defense. You have three backs who can take it for 80 yards at any given point in the game. I feel like that's dangerous, very, very, very dangerous. Because as you can see, it was some plays FAU was trying to sub. We got a fresh new back who's ready to go and just as hungry as the other one. So that's a great complimentary offense. We complement each other so well. We all bring something to the table. It's just a great feeling to have guys that can make plays just as much as you. And it'd be like, it feels like a boulder like off my shoulder. I don't have to make the big play. I could get the four yards here. Because if Mel get it, he might go for 90 the next play. You never know. How would you describe your running style? It looked like you were patiently just waiting to find a hole open, and then you're, boom, you were through it. Yeah, I feel like if I have a lots of different running styles that some of y'all haven't even seen. Like, sometimes I might have to be patient, finesse, depending on the run scheme. Sometimes I might have to run through somebody's face. And if I'm mad, I don't really think too much about scoring. I have to think about hurting people a little bit. I can't lie. Yeah, but I had touchdown dances, too, because you saw a couple of those things. Oh, yeah, it's pretty fun to celebrate with my teammates. We always, they always be asking, what you got next? What you got next? So I'm like, all right, I'm going to show off for y'all. <laughs> How about Nick, how he ran things uh, under center tonight? Oh, Nick did an amazing job. As you can see, if we win, he clearly did his job. You can't win if QB don't perform. He has the one of the most important jobs on the team, and he knows we're all behind his back. He knows that I'm willing to put my life on the line if I'm lead blocking for him, and the guys up front will do it too. I'm just glad that he's comfortable. He was comfortable back there today, and that's how we need to keep it. We need to protect Nick. And we're going to win football games like we did today. What are the big differences between you and Mel? Well, one thing I would say is the height, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Mel, Mel's a little guy, but Mel, he actually, in my opinion, the things I've seen him do in practice, he plays like my favorite player of all time, which is DeAnthony Thomas and Tavon Austin. Like, the cuts he make, it's like, as a bigger guy, I got to get a little lower to make those cuts. I can make them, but Mel just makes them a lot better sometimes. I can't lie, but I never say that to a state star. I never tell him that. But yeah, he, he can go. And me, I just feel as if my big body, like I'm such a big frame, I'm always going to fall forward. Like that's my job. I should have to do that. And that's the only big difference for real. We both could break a run. We both could pass block. We both could catch. We both could do it all. It's just who turn is it to do it? Did you know games like this were possible? I mean, you only had like 160 some yards at Charlotte in four games. Did you know this was possible? Uh, I definitely knew because I don't, I don't want to say check my background, but I've been playing ball. Like football has never changed. 
really is just the situation that you're in. And God put me in a great situation today. Coach Jim Moore trusting me. Coach Sammons trusting me. Coach Wilcock trusting me. And I'm just grateful that I made the best out of my opportunity. How much does it help to find a place and, and feel like you belong? Same thing for Nick, too. You know, he's found a place. And it's got to change the whole dynamic in your confidence. And all it that. feels amazing. I'm just. Like, I don't have to worry about any of the outside stuff. I'm just worried about football and winning this program football game and changing the name. And that's everything that everybody wants to do. And it seems like Connecticut football is kind of the little brothers, and we're trying to change that dynamic. We're trying to win just as much as our boys' basketball team. So that's keeping a chip on our shoulder. We will see them winning. We're just trying to replicate the same win. Specifically about Nick, uh, what makes him such a good runner from the QB position? Nick is a great runner. He clearly has the speed. I'm going to get on him a little bit, tell him work on your vision a little bit, because sometimes I feel like you just follow me, I'm going to take care of you. That's what I'm going to tell him. Follow me, I'm going to have your back. I'm going to take care of my quarterback. He had a nice move on his first touchdown. Yeah, he did, he did, he did, he did. Nick, yeah, he did. Yeah, Nick's a hell of a talent. Like, the things y'all see out there, that's only a bit of it. I know how great Nick can be, and he can lead this team to a lot of wins. And as, as much as that running game is a problem, eventually teams are going to pick up on that. And that's when y'all going to really see who he really is. How Coach. far do you feel like this team has come since we won? Not far enough. I mean, we won two games. I feel like these are two games we were supposed to win. I feel like those other two games we were supposed to win those. But it's definitely we took a step forward. Like, I hope nobody, nobody should be satisfied about this. We did what we were supposed to do. Now it's time to do it the next week and the week after that and the week after that. And once it gets to that point, I feel like, all right, now we're in a groove. Coach said that Cam is banged up a little bit and he wanted to give him a little rest today, so he wanted to emphasize you guys, but that he's still the lead back. I mean, is there more of a three-headed back now or four-headed back than just one well, guy? Well, Coach Wilcox, he explained it to me. He, he knew the situation would come. Like, we have four backs who can all go. Someday it might be your day, someday it might be his, someday it might be his day, someday it might be his. And we all understood that it's backs and it's never no hate because at the end of the day, the goal is to win. So as long as we win, that's the only thing we really care about. Today it just happened to be me and Mel today. We'll see who it is next week.